Hi there guys and girls, this is Mary the Lapis Demon with a tutorial that many requested. How you can test for players writing something in Minecraft 1.9. Because the command to test for players writing something changed during the 1.9 snapshots due to the changes of the writing tag in favor of the passengers tag about which I informed you already in a previous video. And in this context, I will also explain to you what UUIDs are, as this seems to be still not very clear to some people, and I haven't seen a tutorial yet that explains it in a simplified, easy to understand way for beginners as well as also for people who are not native English speakers like myself. Yes, you see correctly, free time the Mary. Uh, my other two accounts helped me in demonstrating you the changed command. Prior to 1.9, you tested a player writing something, for example, like so. Test for at a riding ID boat, or if you tested for players riding a boat with an assigned UUID least of one and UUID most of one, it would be test for at a riding ID boat, comma UUID least one, comma UUID most one. This is how an exemplary 1.9 test for command for a player riding something looks like now. Test for at a root vehicle entity ID boat. And you can also test for a specific UUID for the boat in 1.9 with test for at a root vehicle entity ID boat, comma, attach least one, comma, attach most one. So what changed between Minecraft 1.8 and 1.9 is that players have now a root vehicle tag due to the deletion of the riding tag. Root vehicle contains the ridden entity's data. Attach least and attach most are the UUID least and UUID most of that entity. And entity contains the data about the entity itself, in this case a boat. As you can see, Mary sits in a birch boat, whereas Lapis Demon sits in a dark oak boat. If I run this command here, test for at a root vehicle entity ID boat type birch, it will output only Mary as detected player. If we use this command here though, test for at a root vehicle entity ID boat it will detect both Mary as well as Lapis Demon because you didn't specify the boat any further and thus it will find both boats that are being ridden by a player. Additionally, I assigned to both boats a unique ID that I can test for as well. An exemplary command how to summon such a boat with a UUID is summon boat tilde 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 UUID least one comma UUID most one comma type birch for a birch boat with UUID least one and UUID most one. The dark oak boat here was summoned with a command summon boat tilde 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 UUID least one comma UUID most two comma type dark oak. And a player riding it can thus be checked with test for at a root vehicle attach least one comma attach most two. In the outro as well as video description, I will link an excellent video by Sly Slime about UUIDs, so definitely check it out. A quick tutorial about some other basics of UUIDs from me though first, to make it better understandable also for beginners. A UUID is a universally unique identifier. If you want to make it easier for you to understand, see it as some sort of unique IP address or unique serial number or unique fingerprint. You get me. The main point here is that you must not forget that this is something that must only exist once in your world. A UUID here in Minecraft usually contains a bunch of letters as well as digits and it's divided into five groups which are separated by hyphens. You might have seen something like this already if you look into the player data folder of your world save files because your player has got such a UUID as well. That means even if you change your player name in Minecraft, the internal identity, your unique fingerprint, so to speak, remains the same. 
As I just showed you, when I hover here over my name, it tells me my personal unique universal ID. And each and every entity in the world, including yourself and any other player and so-called attribute modifiers, also have got such a UUID. I might talk about attribute modifiers in another tutorial sometime if you're interested. One important thing to note, if you take a spawn egg or use a summon command, a random UUID gets generated for this entity. I can demonstrate to this here with these mushroom cows. Left one got the random UUID because I used a regular summon command for it without any UUID in that summon command. So if I let it say something, then summon another mushroom, let it say something as well. And now I hover over both of those random mushroom texts in the chat. You see they got completely different UUIDs. This mushroom here to the right got this quite easy to read UUID. UUID most one, UUID least three. So what you are doing by assigning UUID least, UUID most is to define yourself what the UUID shall be. That means instead of having a random complicated number that you need to read out first, you can choose the exact UUID beforehand, which makes the whole testing and controlling process easier. Why does the UUID usually look so weird with numbers but also letters? That's because the numbers you use are being converted into the hexadecimal system. Hexadecimal is a mixed up word between Greek, hexa, which means 6, and Latin decim, which means 10, so together 16. Normally we use the decimal system from 0 to 9, then 10, 11 and so on. You know the regular decimal system. As example, some decimal system numbers in a comparison table. As you can see, the hexadecimal system got also the digits 0 to 9, but 10 is an A, 11 is B and so on, up to number 15, which is an F. Number 16 is 1, 0 in hexadecimal, 18 is 1, 2 and so on. 26 is 1, A. That's how these weird or oh, confusing looking UUIDs are converted. So hexadecimal uses the digits 0 to 9 and then followed by A to F. You might know those hex codes already from hex color codes where RGB colors are expressed with hex. 6 times 0 is black, 6 times F white in that color hex system. That's the whole mystery behind it. I know it looks quite confusing if you don't know what it is based on, but now you know, so no confusion anymore. Um, let's get back to our Minecraft UUIDs. A UUID is 32 digits long. The hyphens are not counted. The first three groups with 16 digits on such a long UUID are the UUID most. And the last two groups with also 16 digits are the UUID least. That means that a complete UUID contains a pair, a combination of the UUID least and UUID most. I hope that you now know the basics what a UUID is. The main thing is that you please keep in mind that it must be unique and as I already said I will link you Sliced Lime's very good video tutorial about them which covers everything else I didn't tell you here. I only tried to mainly cover what wasn't mentioned in his video. Keep in mind that we are still in the 1.9 snapshots. Things can still change, so follow me on Twitter and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Activate annotations and read the video description because I will keep you informed.